Good morning. This is Playing to Win with me, Mark Henderson Leary, my good friend, Brad Fryer. Good morning, Brad. It's Monday. Good morning, Mark. How are you, sir? Very well. You ready to crush it this week? I am going to smash it this week. Why don't you say smash crush. it? Crush it. Crush is more yeah, like a compression. It. Smash is yeah. more like a, you know. And smash more... has other, yeah. So you're angry? Crush. I'm going to crush. Heard... No. You're not angry? I think you might be. I think you might be. And something just sort of leaked out. You know, I'm angry because I was the first loser this weekend, but that's okay. But I'm, but I'm, I'm okay. Well, I'm good. I'm ready, let's I'm unpack that. Let's week. unpack that. I heard, I heard I'm the first loser, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's okay to lose. I believe the name of the live stream is playing to win, my friend. Let's unpack that. Let's talk to me. Talk just, just me, you and me here. Nobody's listening. Oh, really, man. literally, no one's listening. <laughs> You know, Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, you're last. And, yeah. uh, you know, was in a, a fishing tournament this weekend. And we, we just, we didn't take first place. We came in second. And uh, I got home and was telling the family, hey, you know, we got second place out of all these teams. And the, the children reminded me that, uh, Dad, you were the first place loser. Um, so I have, so you said that earlier. Did they really say that? They did. Yeah. And, and that's really <laughs> something you taught them. Yeah, I mean, you know, there were there were some there were some tongue in, there were some tongue in cheek there, but uh, nonetheless, they said it, and uh, you know, so so uh, we, we 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 joke about that. So it's funny, especially when it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not me, I can laugh at you all day long, Brad. It's good, but uh, but let's talk about that second place feeling because that is you know all those Super Bowl not winners. Like a lot of people oh. say, it was much better to be kicked out in the first second round. Um, yeah. But so, you know, what's that like? Do you, do you, do you, do you feel good about your second place or do you feel like, man, just well, yeah, yeah, no, I, we, we, we do for, for many reasons. Um, one is we went from, you know, 15th place, uh, in the last one to second in this one. And, uh, and, and the first place team really worked hard. They, they worked <laughs> a lot harder than we did. They wanted oh, okay. it. They, we, we didn't go to win. We went to, uh, to, to have fun and, to to compete and make a showing we did not go to win uh and so i think that's the difference so when you talk about playing to win yeah um the the behaviors the attitude and the commitment were much different between the first place team and us the first place team went to win they 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 put in two times the hours that we did on the water um in wow. nasty conditions um and uh we were by the time they're rolling back into port we were sitting by the pool having the uh, margaritas so. wow well so one of the things that i think is so important about that is playing to win um uh, you, you clearly won at the in the efficiency race that was yeah. not a named part of the race but it, i think it's especially you know if you if you enter a contest about you know, a tournament of some kind the winning is relatively well defined mm -hmm. but that's not always the case is in life and in business uh, the, the, the first thing you have to understand is what does winning look like? That's, you know, that's spot on, right? I mean, cause everybody, everybody's not running the same race in life. And, and even in, in, in this tournament, you know, we weren't really concerned about winning first place. And so what does that mean? Well, that changes everything that we were doing. You know, we didn't want to, we didn't want to spend 10 hours in, you know, chest deep water with, wind blowing and rain and you know that wasn't that 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 detracts from the experience and so yeah. for us we the wanted to go we you, wanted to you wanted to have and and it's yeah. funny because like there's a big difference between like i didn't really want to win that much anyway as an excuse at the end of the race or end of the, yeah. the tournament as a, or as yeah. opposed to like when you get to the dock and you're like guys what are you thinking like like at all costs or like you know, max fun. And everybody's like, max fun. That's a, that's a yeah. very different intentional experience for, yeah. for the day. I'm, it sounds to me like at every step of the way, you guys were laughing and you were like, you want to call it? No, we catch another fish. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, so the contest was, uh, was redfish and flounder, uh, down in, down in Port Mansfield, the, the trout got wiped out in the freeze. So there was no trout to be caught. So it was just redfish and flounder. And so, um, when we caught our redfish, you know, we put the, the, we put ones that we thought were reasonable size in the cooler. And so for the rest of the time that we agreed we were going to stay on the water, it was just about upgrading. Right. Mm, yeah. You know, and so we were like, Hey, you know what? We got three in the box. Everything's fine. You know, let's just, let's fish a little bit longer. Uh, you know, keep drinking, you know, just have fun. 
if we upgrade, fantastic. If we don't, you know, we'll cut in at, you know, noon or whatever and uh, call it a day. So, yeah. And so, I mean, and, and with our businesses, with, with, you know, your personal life, it's what race are you running? Right. Are yeah. You, this is a great you, metaphor. You I love this metaphor. Enjoying, yeah. Because like, every business owner, every business owner, except for the truly narcissistic, um, you know, sociopaths out there and, and there's, and they are out there, but they're not this common. Yeah. I think as a lot of people think, uh, except for those people, we easily quickly compare ourselves. We're, we show up wanting to have fun and then look around and say, Oh wait, this is a competition. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's really easy for us to start to lose, to be feel judged or the opposite way. They both happen. Like we're, we're, Oh man, that person has a private plane. Yeah. I must not be winning or the opposite, which is, uh, just feeling like, Oh, other people, everybody tells you you're crushing it. That's I experienced that early on in business. Wow, man, you're so young. You own a business. You're a man. It's, it's incredible. And I was like, well, except that I had a slightly different plan for profitability and growth and I'm not meeting those numbers. And so having, having a sense of your own game in a world that kind of puts one or more contests rules, one set, one or more sets of contest rules on top of you. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. If you're a sales rep, you're in a company, you've got a comp plan, you've got a a, a potential vision for the business. If you're a business owner and you haven't thought about exactly what winning looks like for you, you've got the the winning expectations of your staff, your leadership team, whatever you think or whatever they think you think (laughs) they're, they're, they're rowing in some direction. And then you've got, you know, expectations from your family and from other business owners, your peers, if you're an entrepreneur's organization or other, some other peer group, you have to really sort of get clear on all right what game am i actually playing what does winning look like for me and how can i get everybody on my team rowing in that same direction yeah and and having reasonable expectations for what does the effort look like to achieve certain levels of success right yeah yeah you know so you know do you want to be that person that has to work 80 hours a week that that's taking phone calls on saturdays and sundays you know is, is the level of success that you're trying to achieve such that it's going to create an imbalance in your world on things that are important to you, right? You know, for, for me, um, you know, balance and priorities are important. And so does that detract from, you know, the, the top of the hill success? Maybe, right? Does that, uh, does that affect how I view success? Absolutely. You know, being able to be home in the mornings with the kids, being able to be at home in the evening with the kids, being able to uh, afford, um, you know, afford the lifestyle that we want, you know, creating that balance between enjoying life and having having some of the stuff and the, the lifestyle that we want, you know, creates that balance of, okay, well, what do I have to do to get there? You know, well, and we I still, went out. Every, every time I hear the word balance, I just reject it because I, it always sort of creates this sense of like life is always equal. But to me, it's, oh, no, no, it's no. recipes. It's, you know, you know, figuring out the, you know, the right recipe for the right outcome. We've talked about this, yeah. you know, if you want to make a cake, there's a certain amount of sugar and flour and, and, you know, water and fat and milk that kind of you put in there. If you put all sugar in there, it's no longer a cake. It's a hard candy. And if you want a hard candy and if you want something just to pop in your mouth, it's no that you doesn't require a fork or a, or a plate, then it's a better tool. Figure out what recipe you want from your life and your, and your yeah. world. And it takes a lot of work to get clear on what your recipe looks like, because sometimes you've got to concentrate on growing the business. And if to, if you, to have the money to afford the lifestyle might require a sacrifice in lifestyle, but then at some point it switches and it's like, wow, I've, I can afford my lifestyle, but I don't have a lifestyle <laughs> because I'm yeah. always working. Well, and, and, and make sure that you're chasing your dreams, not somebody else's. Exactly. You know, there, there's too often it's, especially in our society of, 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 um, everybody wants everything and they want it now. And it's such a, um, you know, you hear it all the time. What's you know, one of one of my favorite songs of all time is Baz Luhrmann. And I don't know if you remember that song, but you okay? I don't know what you just said, but it sounded it sounded like you're having a little an episode or something. <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> a stroke? Is that what that was? No, the uh, I, I must have glitched. Um, <laughs> Say the name again. 
Baz Luhrmann. But it was okay. like 1990 through the class of 1990. And it was a song where he just spoke quotes. Mm. And, um, and, you know, and, you know, one of there's two, two quotes in that, in that song that I really like. One was, um, uh, don't worry. Just know that worrying is as effective as trying to solve an algebra equation by chewing bubble gum. That's that's one of my favorites. You know, in other words, in other words, don't worry because it does you absolutely no good to worry. It changes nothing. Um, but You're the, much at better the at the, that than I am, Brad. I, I you you have that calm that I don't have in those. I I don't think worrying helps, but I do it anyway. <laughs> I'm yeah, working on yeah. It. yeah. You know, and, and it it really it's um it is it is so important to recognize that 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 does you no good just think you know take a step back think about what you're doing think about where you're going and that'll be fine um but the other one was uh, remember that the race is long and at the end of the day it's only against yourself mm. you know and that's that's uh, that's the other piece of this puzzle right success is relative it's it's all about what's important to you you know, you, it doesn't matter if, you know, if, if, if you live next to the Joneses and they have everything and, and you don't, as long as you have what's important to you, right? The quality of life, time, health, um, you know, experiences. You know, I tell, I tell my wife all the time, you know, um, I'm not about buying stuff. Like, I don't, I don't need a lot of stuff, but I would, I love to spend money on experiences. Hmm. I would much rather, you know, hey, look, let's 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 drop a bunch of money on doing something versus dropping a bunch of money on, you know, high end fashion and name brand stuff that's going to sit in the closet 96 percent of the time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, because that's what's important to us. That's what our that's what our value system is. That's what our our priorities are. Um, and, and creating creating those goals in life, creating those priorities in life, help create that, uh, that, that plan of what are you going to do and how are you going to approach it? I, I, I think that it's a, I agree. And it's a lifelong journey at age 48, be 49 here a few months. Um, it's, it's every God, year. You're old. <laughs> Everybody in my <laughs> world says that <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing to think about how the goals have changed sort of, I mean, the yeah. perceptions of goals, borrowed goals, um, seasonal goals, goals that made sense for a while that needed to change. And, and I, one of the things that I think is hardest for, for, for me, but it's been the most rewarding is letting go of goals, letting goals die that need to die things, that, things that seemed really valuable for decades. Suddenly like yeah. I gotta, I gotta make a shift and that's, yeah. that's been hard. And so, yeah. you know, if, if you're highly competitive, and you show up at the fishing tournament and someone says, let's have a good time. And your identity is associated with winning. It's like, Hmm. Yeah. Should I be on another team is a real question or yeah. is, or is it like, you know what? That would be great. That would be great yeah. to have to let go of performance for the next three hours. Yeah. And, and recognize why you're doing what you're doing, right? Is yeah. it ego driven or is there something else to it? Uh, cause I, and, and that's, a, I like what you said, letting some of those goals die, being willing to let go because my goals now for me and my family and my business are different than they were, you know, five years ago, six years ago. Um, I mean, substantially different because priorities have changed. You know, what's important to me has changed and, you know, letting go of ego and making it more about, um, you know, family and, and, and results. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's okay to, to pivot. I mean, once again, they're your goals. They don't matter to anybody yeah. else. You know, do you have people rooting for you? Sure. But they don't care what your goals are. They just want you to be happy. And yeah. so that's what you have to figure out is, is what, what does make you happy. Yeah. And I think it goes up and down. Letting goes, it's getting sort of ossified in a goal from childhood you know, with the status or expectations of oneself. I'll be able to have, I'll have a Lamborghini. I want a Lamborghini. And at some point in, in life, if you're a successful with money, you got the choice. Like I could maybe buy a Lamborghini. <laughs> I could actually do that. Then what? <laughs> yeah. Well, so then you got it. Then the opportunity cost that I think that's a good example, but this, by the same token, like I just the, bought the last vehicle, the most recent vehicle I bought, really was an indulgent 
purchase because it was not that practical. I mean, it's practical because it'll be useful, but it, it practical meaning, you know, it's not a minivan. <laughs> it's definitely not. There's a, there was a lot. I could have made the case that a minivan really would have been very practical in my world, but instead I got a Jeep Gladiator, which is a totally different vehicle. And it has a lot of practicality and a lot of impracticality in that like I can rock crawl the Rubicon Trail. And I might try to rock, rock crawl something like Rubicon Trail. And there's no like... You might need to someday. Co cost benefit on that. But I just sort of decided <laughs> that for my actual goals and time in life, I want the capability to do that. And so that was yeah. that was not something I would have predicted for myself five years ago. And so yeah. that, that kind of corrected back into in, indulgence. Uh, but the Lamborghini, I probably, thinking back, you know, you know, I, I was a supercar, every every many of my peers <laughs> supercar was in the destiny and it's sort of like yeah. I, think I probably could buy a supercar yeah i mean cars are cars are always the tough one for me because i'm, I'm i i really like cars i don't like go fast cars i like you know fun cars mm -hmm. uh, or what my definition of fun is and so ca cars are always one of those tough ones to play into this mix because there's no good justification i mean i've got a i've got a great friend who uh who always buys cars well uh, mm. he, he's, he's a big Porsche guy. And so, but he knows how to buy them. So they're always investments for him. For me, it's just like, I want that, you know, that thing. So I go out and buy it. And somebody says, well, why in the hell did you buy that? And I say, because I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's no intellectual justification. For yeah. it. That's just what, uh, so, uh, but it's just such a horrible waste. But anyway, um, but no. you say that I don't see I, I don't know that it is I think that you get those are kind of the choices like you know this is a goal for me this is winning looks like owning this car for a while yeah you know so so that's the key right is the key is identifying the the feeling associated with that ownership right you know um yeah. if you if you have this dream of having a Lambo the, the, it's the vehicle itself is not really the goal it's the it's what it makes you feel that's the goal mm -hmm. right? because what is the, what does a Lambo mean to most people? Well, it means ultimate success or it means achievement or it means, you know, or it's hugely ego driven. You know, I had a friend, I had a friend who, who bought a, a Lamborghini, had it for a very short amount of time and, uh, and, and got rid of it because he said it was just a pain in the ass to own. And I said, yeah. what do you mean? He goes, cause everywhere I went, people wanted to sit in it and take pictures. People wanted rides, you know, he goes, and you couldn't, you, couldn't be incognito. It was just, yeah. And he said it was just, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. You know, yeah, I have a friend one. say exact opposite. He had a, a Lambo for a while and sold it and got the Audi R8, which mm -hmm. actually was built on the same frame. And he hated the Audi because it didn't turn as many heads. He wanted to drive the clown car. He wanted everybody to think he, he was, you know, he, he wanted that attention. It was, and so he, he was like, this sucks. Yeah. I, and, and so he yeah. went back and he, and he, and he got the That's Lambo later. funny. Yeah, we well, see, but I mean, that, that is a prime example of, of understanding your motivation, right? You know, what, why do you do what you do? Yeah. Um, do, you, do you want, do you, what, you know, and, and, and you, as you've talked about, your goals have changed over time. And I think the older you get, the more you start looking at longevity and security and, um, you know, balance, which, you know, I, I agree with what you said. There's never really a balance. I mean, look, we yeah. spend, you know, we spend 40 to 60 hours a week at work. You know, that's that's horribly imbalanced to the amount of time we spend with family and friends. Um, so balance is probably not the right word, but it's. Um, in fact, that would be interesting. We should come up with a new word for that. I use healthy. To me, to me, it's like, I want a balanced life. No, I want a healthy life. I want, I want the ingredients to create the intention that I want. You know, I'm thinking about what it, what it needs to be, what it looks like. What is the healthy? Not yeah, I, I agree with that word, but there's gotta be another word that, that, that creates that illustration that balance is intended mm -hmm. to create, yeah. right? Because balance is that visual that's intended to create this, you know, you want to, you don't want to have too much of this. You don't want to have too much of that. But even when, even when the, 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 the ratios are off. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, because I, I think about food. Here's your recipe sense. example. Yeah, yeah. I think about food. Oftentimes what we use yeah. that, unfortunately, and to my mind, the word balance is completely, uh, destroyed like it's it's the reputation of the word balance is, is lost can't get it back but in food you might say balance this is really balanced or interesting because like multiple textures flavors temperatures those are the kind of things you see in a, oh, in a, a plate 
you know, well layered, well, I don't know. I'll have to think about that for sure. Yeah. But I yeah, do that, think that you kind of alluded to the, I think you were alluding to this, I and mean, I certainly picked up this idea that you, you're, you're in motion. If you're moving towards a more tightly controlled life, what, because you're trying to get more and more discipline toward a performance goal, could be athletic, could be money. Cause I certainly did that with money. I went to the, when I figured out what I'd been doing wrong with money, I got really good with budgets and I was Ramseyed out like crazy. And I really got really good. And then at some point I was like, I can't breathe. And I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> so then I had to turn yeah. the ship the other way and say, all right, there is an emotional aspect. Not all spending is bad. There is good spending and bad spending. And let's figure this out. And so I'm, now I'm kind of a, moving away, which I think will, you know, if, if history is any guide, there'll be a tack back. It'll be like, okay, now we've gotten a little far, a little, a little loose. Let's, let's, yeah. let's cowboy country. Let's bring this back. Businesses do the same thing. I, I gave a talk a few weeks ago about this concept of hitting the ceiling uh, as a business. And as it turns out, the the patterns of businesses as they grow and they scale from entrepreneurial all the way up to mega businesses, there is kind of this tacking back and forth of uh, central centralized control and decentralized. So like in the entrepreneurial stage, it's very decentralized. We need everybody to know what I need and everybody does their work. Don't ask me for permission. I ain't got that kind of time. And then as we get a little bit bigger, it's like, well, we got some very uninitiated people that if we don't give them clear instructions, they'll do God knows what. And so we got to give clarity and then we tighten that up. And then at some point it's like, I can't keep track of all these people. I need to empower some leaders to make some decisions in these other cities. And then it kind of does that kind of back and forth as you grow. And so I think that's probably fair as human beings have a tendency to learn through change that you could expect that in your life, that you're going to sort of tack back and forth between various, or really probably a couple of major poles of control and, and, and non-control. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then that's, that's kind of where we started this whole conversation, right? Is, um, you know, identifying what does success mean to you? What does winning mean? mean to you, right? Because winning doesn't have to mean being on the number one spot mm -hmm. in the podium, right? Yeah. Or, I mean, look, you, you know, the Olympics are, are around the corner again. And, um, you know, the winning for some of these people and for some of these countries and for is not getting on the podium. It's just getting there. Yeah. Right. Uh, or making the team or, and that's okay, right? You know, you don't have to, once again, you're not racing against anyone else at the end of the day, the race is against yourself. And so figuring out what that um, healthy uh, concoction looks like, that's <laughs> yeah. going to, I, we're going to come up with something we good, will, I yeah. promise you. Yeah. But, um, you know, figuring out what it, what it is that's going to make you happy. Um, you know, if, I, if, I, if it's, I, I love this, I love what we're going here. Cause it's really got me thinking because, uh, I love to go back to, um, what's his name? Bob, Bob's name is I a second ago. Bob Bowman, <laughs> no, Bob, okay. Bob Bowman, you know who Bob Bowman is, uh, he is, uh, Michael Phelps swimming coach. Ah, uh, okay. And he is, uh, I, I think have, I have seen quoting. interviews with him. I've I've heard him say specifically that people his 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 uh, coaches his trainees get really upset when they say you know how much training is it going to take for me to hit the podium or to win and his answer is it's going to take what it takes yeah. and he he hates people say, people hate that answer but he's like there's no formula it's like yeah. you will know how much it takes when you get it <laughs> that's that's the idea but. I think that thinking is not, it's not, it's not universal thinking. That's thinking towards that controlled, very, you know, precise definition of winning. You talk about competing with yourself. That's true. But you're, you have chosen to compete with yourself on a world stage in the exact same way that everyone else in your yeah. stage is competing. So yeah. it's, it looks a lot like competing with other people. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so it's very controlled. And so I, that's the mentality. And, and that's where the, the, the number one team, your fishing team, they showed up with like, we know what winning looks like. It's right there in the rule book and, and it takes what it takes. And that's the thinking. And then there that's is right. I, every human being is going to tack back. I go, okay, cool. I can't win Olympic trophies forever. I can't, gold medals are not a forever thing. 
you can get it and keep it forever until you die and then you lose it or they get sold at auction but yeah, so it's not forever either and then at some point you tack back away and say like the more of emotional what, what does winning look like emotionally and and i sounded to me like you were already tacking away from you know like we're going towards this lack of less control more focus on on the on our feelings and and be less rigid in a controlled way this is that diversity delegation emotional motivation less controlled sense of, of winning 100 percent. yeah yep find out find out what makes you happy and that's that's the uh, that's the race that you need to run because i do think people die with a judgment that's more in that intangible measurement people aren't this is i don't think they're dying going oh, three golds it's incredible it pissed off so many people, but whatever. Yeah. Three yeah. goals. <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, and nobody on their deathbed says, I wish I had trained harder or worked more. You yeah. know, I, I don't think that's, uh, that's ever what they say. So, but I do people uh, actually, there's more into that study and it's, and it's less about, um, not working as much. And, and there's, there's really a component, that's the whole nurses study, right? All the, the, uh, I forgot what it was done, but like the regrets, uh, mm -hmm. they all it had interviewed people who were on their deathbed. And there was a lesser known component of that that was much higher. It was less about working and more about failure to pursue their own dreams. Mm -hmm. So working and working for someone else and following someone else's rigid rules is a way to waste your life as opposed to going inward, finding out what you want and pursuing your own path. That's a beautiful bow for today. That's what I was thinking. So. Let's wrap it with that. That's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. bow. Yeah. So let's let's Bring let's we're gonna we're gonna crush it this week, or we're gonna smash it. So if you're a smasher, I think we're okay. gonna. I, I'll explain the, the the some of the alternative meanings to smash later, but let's stick with crush. Okay, we're gonna crush it this week, and part of how we're gonna do that is look inward and figure out what it is about those at inner voice. What does winning really look like for us? Uh, this is a time when businesses are still struggling many but many of them are not many of them are struggling to keep up though a lot of the people who are coming to me right, right now are, are very much overwhelmed with opportunity they feel like the opportunity to lose is high and uh, they want to get it right they don't want to mess it up in front of their uh, their customers their clients their patients their staff their families and the opportunity is 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 real you can you can mess it up you can more likely to die of indigestion than starvation in a time like this and, and it's really a big problem so use this time of opportunity to, to ask yourself and reflect and take the time take that clarity break to ask yourself what does winning really look like for you because the opportunity to make those choices are right now look inward awesome. and go play to win anything else you'd like to add to that my friend I couldn't say it any better. That was well said. Have a uh, have a fantastic week, and we look forward to seeing you next time. On we'll see you next time. Absolutely. See you, Brad.